So it's an interesting question of how many transactions per second. So Plutus scripts are fundamentally different than a value transfer or like a transaction to mint an NFT token or these types of things. So, you know, an average transaction, realistically speaking, for most network conditions with cryptocurrencies, if you're sitting in the 50 to 100 TPS for those average types of things, you're probably doing okay for daily volume. Um, now, it would be nice to get the core chain to around a 500 to 1,000 TPS. If you do a lot of stuff about increasing the block size, adding augmentations to the network stack with things like fountain codes or other types of things to allow uh, you to propagate things a little bit smarter, some compression magic, and then you add in um, input endorsers for some parallelism and block processing. Uh, I think that you probably can get to that sweet spot of about 500 to 1,000 for the core layer. Getting beyond that for any single sharded architecture is not going to happen in a distributed system. You'll see all these people, they say 50,000, 100,000, well, you know, they're really centralizing things. And second, they're offloading computation in some sort of clever way of batching. And that's effectively a roll-up or a layer two solution. Uh, so you can do that, and Cardano's designed for that, with Hydra in one direction and the side chains in the other direction. Uh, and also, if you have a lot of load balancing concerns, so if you have an EVM sidechain, you can always spin up multiple EVM sidechains. And using cryptographic sortition, you can actually run those with a faster BFT protocol than the base Warpbors protocol. And that's effectively what we're doing with Mamba, but just in a single sharded instance. And then we can obviously enhance and add more magic to that. And there's papers like Rapid Chain that kind of show how to do that. So I don't think there's a TPS problem. And uh, anybody who claims that, they just don't understand what they're talking about. It's more of a question of what is the off-chain, what is the on-chain component, and how are you constructing the root of trust of the system? Uh, and it's a really complex application-specific question. So, for example, at DEX, you're concerned about things like front-running, uh, you're concerned about uh, global availability of the contents of the book. You know, does somebody have a view of the order book before somebody else, and can they take advantage of that? Or does somebody, because of their position in the network, have the ability to execute an order before someone else does? And we even see this in centralized exchanges with high-frequency trading. Uh, so that requires a different model of trust and operation, uh, usually using commitments and other things, uh, then let's say an oracle, which has a very different model of trust. You're periodically injecting information into the system. And you have some notion of veracity of the information that's being injected to the system. So everything is a snowflake, and your TPS is, is just a means to an end. And uh, usually it, there's so much more to the story about that. But then people use it as a marketing metric, and as a consequence, it becomes a measuring contest, but it's meaningless. A dump truck probably has a thousand horsepower, but it's completely different than a Koenigsegg, even though the raw metric is the same. They do different things and they have different utility.